Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Boxing Reviews Now 2, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at ASUS Store's Drive Store 2 Pro. This is the AS3302T, a powerful little package which may be just right for your backup needs. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at ASUS Store's Drive Store 2 Pro. This is uh, essentially an upgraded version of the ASUS Store Drive Store 2, which is the AS1102T, which uh, we reviewed a little while back, actually, which you can check out up here, which was one of the best budget NASes on the market, especially in the dual bay format. But ASUS Store, in their wisdom, have looked at some of the, uh, the pros and cons of that particular design and have upgraded it and come out with this, which is the Pro version. Now, this has various different options available to it. There is actually a four bay version as well. So if you do want a little bit of extra flexibility, then you can go for the four bay version of that. We'll link that in the video description also. But today we'll be focusing mainly on the two bay version. So what we'll be doing in this video, we'll go through, do a quick unboxing, go through the specifications. Uh, we'll discuss some of the pros and cons and also some of the advantages over some of the other models on the market and also the advantages against its kind of predecessor, the AS1102. Also, we'll be looking at discussing what I'll be using this for personally, and also some things which you may find it beneficial for in your own home office, small office, or just for personal backup use. So starting off with the packaging, let's take a quick tour of the box itself. So on the box, we'll see branding, really nice branding. Asia Store do a fantastic job of this, much better than those plain brown boxes. And if you're planning on buying this as a present for somebody who's a little bit tech savvy, then actually I think they're going to be very pleased with this. So as we can see on the box, this is the ASUS Store Drive Store 2 Pro AS3302T. Some of the key specifications of it here, so we've got a quad-core ARM CPU. So this is using the Realtek RTD1296 quad-core chip, which is a 1.4 gigahertz chip. It's ARM 64-bit, 1.4 gigahertz, absolutely fine for NAS purposes, especially when we're looking at two bay versions. If you're looking at maybe five bays, more than that, then maybe you want to look at Intel processor, that kind of thing, or maybe even an AMD processor. But for this kind of niche box, I think it's absolutely perfect. It keeps the price down and it's also pretty nippy. Also included, we've got USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. There's actually three ports on here. So one of the good points about this, although this is actually just a dual bay version, if you're getting particularly data heavy and you've got a lot more storage options and you're thinking, well, I've spent my money on this, so I actually want to expand it, you can actually do that relatively easily. Asus Store actually do expansion modules, so you can add on up to another 12 drives on this if you wanted to, which gives you a crazy amount of storage somewhere in the region of 250 terabytes based on today's market drives. What you can get around about 18 terabytes, obviously, as drive capacities increase, then that number will also increase. As it stands at the moment, with the two bay version, you can put in two 18 terabyte or 20 terabyte drives. They seem to be the largest ones available kind of in the mainstream market at the moment. One of the real key features of this, especially as networking is starting to get faster and faster, and even these days, even routers and broadband providers are providing network adapters with 2.5 gigabit connections. This has got a 2.5 gigabit connection. So we're looking at multi-gigabit here. Now don't worry if you are using a slightly older technology, maybe you've even got a 10100 or a gigabit switch, this is gonna be absolutely fine, completely backwards compatible, but it does give you that option. So when you've got the money, when you've got the funds and when they're actually more readily available, you can swap out your switch for a nice fast 2.5 gigabit version and you can get that increase in speeds. Also supported by this processor is hardware decoding. So if you're maybe thinking of using this as some sort of Plex media agent, or you're just gonna use the inbuilt ASUS store apps, such as AI videos, then this will do native 4K transcoding of up to 10-bit files. So that's gonna be absolutely great for those kind of purposes. It also features support for wake on WAN. So that means you can actually wake up the device if it goes into power saving mode and you're out and about somewhere and you wanna access it from another PC or from your mobile phone or iPad, that kind of thing you can actually have it to wake up on command. Also, obviously, it does support wake on LAN also. It also features a completely toolless design, so if you just wanna install some drives and off to the races, very easy to do, no tools required whatsoever. Although, if you do want to, if you do wanna get a little bit more in depth and get inside and actually clean out fans, that kind of stuff, then you can just use two screws, remove the outer chassis, and you've got full access to the internal components. And all of this is backed up with a three-year warranty, which is actually something of a market leader. Most of NASs in this kind of price bracket, generally you're looking at a two-year warranty at best. So Asia Store have gone that little extra mile and given a three-year warranty. 
Now, talking of price, at the moment in the UK, you can pick this up for somewhere in the region of about £230. Now, this is at the very end of March 2022. Obviously, prices may change. The latest prices will be listed in the video description below, so you can click on those to find out the local pricing in your areas. But yeah, £230, I think this is really good value for money. If you look at the other alternatives on the market, I'm not going to mention any specific brands, but if you look at specific features such as 2.5 gigabit LAN and also a dual base setup with a similar sort of processing power, you're generally going to be spending considerably more. So Asus Store actually do have the kind of more budget area of the market pretty much to themselves at the moment. With that said, if you do want to save a little bit more money and you don't want some of the pro features of this particular model, obviously you can pick up the AS1102T, the Drive Store 2, for somewhere in the region of about 160 to 170 pounds. So potentially a 60 or 70 pound saving. On the side of the box, we've got some of the specifications. So I'll give you a quick close of that so you can get more in depth, but essentially just pretty much drills through exactly the same as what I've already told you. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look and see what we actually get. Now, the first thing you'll notice actually when you unbox a Asus Store product, it's, um, I don't think it's unique, but it's actually a very nice thing to have. Actually on the box itself, you've got all the QR codes and all the links directly there. So you've got start.asusstore.com. You've also got things like college.asusstore.com. If you actually want to learn more about the individual software features and really get a bit more in depth, then the uh, college section is brilliant. There's an absolute ton of information there. So if there's something you're not sure how to do, or maybe you can't find a video on how to do things on YouTube, then college.asusstore.com is a really, really good place to start learning. Okay, so let's get into what we actually get in the box. So clearly, obviously you get the NAS itself, which we'll take a look at in more depth shortly, but we also get our accessories box. Now the accessories box, I'll go through this as quickly as I can, because it's a bit boring, but some people do want to know what you get. So first of all, you get a LAN cable. So this is a Cat5e cable, absolutely fine for 2.5 gigabit connections. Of course, if you want to use other cables, you can do. You get a UK power plug, obviously, depending on the region you're in, you'll get the one relevant to you. It's actually got the kettle lead style on there. So if you are mounting this in somewhere, which is slightly uh, obscure, then you can, of course, get extensions for that, should you need it. You also get the power brick itself, which is uh, quite a small one, nice and easy to hide somewhere if you need to. 65 watt unit, so plenty of power there, and it's got a barrel type connection on the end. Also included is a quick start guide, although realistically, with all the information on the box, you don't need that at all. And also you get some screws for mounting two and a half inch drives into the NAS itself. So let's take a look at the NAS itself. And actually, as you see, obviously it is only a two bay unit, so it is gonna be quite compact, but still itself, I think they've done a really nice job. Nice design on the front, so we've got this angular shape. You've got the Asia Store logo in that nice rose gold, which seems to be becoming more and more popular these days. On the front, we've got all the LEDs to tell you what exactly is going on. And also you've got a power button at the top, so you press that to turn it on. And you can also press and hold that as well to turn it off should you need to. Towards the bottom there, there is the USB backup button. So on the front, we've got our USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. So what you can do is you can actually set it up in the NAS so that there's a specific folder that you can back up to. So if you've got an external drive or just a USB stick with information on and you've got home and you want to quickly do a backup, rather than putting it in your PC, manually dragging and dropping files all over the place, literally plug in your USB stick, press the button and it will flash. When it's done, it will stop flashing, remove your drive. That is it. Your files are backed up. Absolutely brilliant. Above that, we've got our diagnostic LEDs. So you've got two drive activity LEDs. Above that, we've got the USB activity LED. You've also got network activity LED, a problem light, which is basically something you don't want to see. So that is going to tell you if there's any faults, that kind of stuff. And at the top is just your power light. So yep, all nice and simple, does exactly what it's meant to. On the front, you've got the removal section here. So this bit is just magnetic easy to remove and that then shows you the two drive bays. Now the drive bays are really easy to remove although they're not that easy because they're actually in there quite well. So although the actual mechanism itself is very simple so what we do is pull this section out and there and then you can pull the caddies out. The caddies are actually in there pretty decent so they don't want to fall out, they don't slop around which actually is really good for noise prevention because they're in there really snugly you don't get all those weird vibrations. Obviously depending on the drives you use that is going to be depending how much noise is made, but essentially the actual caddies themselves are designed to minimize noise wherever possible. Now to install a drive, it's very simple to do. On the side, we've just got these pull tabs. So you pull the tabs out on both sides, put your drive in, line it up with the holes, put these back in, put it in the machine, absolutely simple. So you've got no issues there. The caddies themselves, as I said, you can, if you want, put a two and a half inch drive in there. So you've got the holes there, recessed screw holes, so you can put a smaller drive in, either SSD or an older hard disk drive. If you've got one knocking around, you can use those. Ideally, if you can, 
This works best, especially for data redundancy, if you're using a matched pair of drives. But of course, you don't have to. That is the beauty of this. It does support both JBOD and RAID types. So JBOD is basically just a bunch of disks. And you can use this if you want to, just with a single drive in there. Again, obviously, you don't get your data redundancy, but if you're just using it as a form of network storage for multiple people to access, and you're not too particularly concerned if you lose any data, then a single drive might be the way to go. On the sides, nothing really to speak of, but on the back is where it gets a little bit more interesting. And this is where we get some advantages over the standard Drive Store 2, the Pro version. You do get an additional USB port on there. So again, if you are planning to expand this in the future with one of Asia Store's expansion drives, you can plug in two to the back there. Plug in one in the front, you could if you wanted to, but it's probably gonna look a little bit ugly, but certainly you can if you want to, giving you three extension drives. So realistically, you could probably just use that for maybe a USB hard drive for backing up purposes or additional storage. Underneath that, we've got our 2.5 gigabit LAN. There is a 70 mil fan in there, which is extremely quiet, crazy quiet. And actually, that is another thing that the Pro version has over the standard Drive Store 2. The fan is much improved, PWM control, very, very quiet as well. So that is really good. At the bottom, there is a reset button. So if you get to some point where the drive is completely unresponsive, completely dead, you can press and hold the reset button to do a factory reset or just to reset it. And also you've got your power connection, a couple of screws top and bottom. So if you want to remove the side panel, you can do, take the screws out, take the side off, getting access internally. And we've got a Kensington lock slot at the bottom. So there we go, there's a quick tour of the actual device itself. Let's take a look now at some screen recordings I did a little bit earlier on of actually how to set the drive up. It's really, really easy. If you're uh, somewhat of a newbie to this and you're a little bit concerned that you're not gonna be able to set this up, it's really, really simple. Asus Store have made it so easy. Literally, there's like a one-click setup, which is kind of not one-click, but you get the general idea. It's very much a simplified process. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to obviously plug in the drive, get power to it, plug it into a suitable ethernet port, then head over to your computer and in your address bar, just type in start.asusstore.com and this will bring up all the options. You can go through, choose your specific drive model from the drop-down list, and then it will take you into the setup process. You can download the ACC app, which runs on your PC, or you can run it on a mobile phone also. This is Asus Store's Control Center, or Control Central. So you can go in there and you can connect to the device and then start the setup process. Now, setup process, again, very easy to do. Literally, it can be as easy or as complicated as you want it to be. So for this particular instance, I've just put in a username of test and a password. Ideally, you want to put in a nice strong password. Obviously, in the world we live in at the moment, hacks and all that kind of stuff are becoming more and more prevalent. So the stronger your password, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for those brute force attacks. And obviously, don't write your password down somewhere stupid where people can see it. So the next part, you can actually go in and set up your RAID version. Now, of course, you don't have to use RAID if you don't want to. You can just set it to JBOD or just a bunch of disks or just a single disk. This won't give you any data redundancy, but will give you the maximum storage size. If you do want data redundancy, set it to RAID 1, which will be mirroring. And then you will get the capacity of basically one of the drives, but it will be mirrored across the two. Hopefully that makes some sense. Once you've gone through that, selected your particular options, it'll go through and it'll set up the drive, initialize, download any relevant security updates that are necessary. And after a short while, you'll find you're back on the home screen, at which point then you can go through and check out various apps that are available. There are actually an absolute ton of apps available. Some of the nice things I like as well, things like Clam AV, which is the antivirus software. You can install that, it's free of charge, you don't have to pay a subscription or anything. And Azu Store have actually got a load of first party apps, which is basically apps that have been designed by them for these types of devices. Loads of really good ones. One of them I like actually is Take Easy. Take Easy is one that I'll be using personally. So essentially what you can do is put in a URL or address of a website, a content creator, or maybe even a Twitch account, and you can basically download all of the content. Now for me, this is gonna be perfect because with YouTube, you never know exactly what is gonna happen in the future. So the plan is I'm actually gonna download all of my YouTube content that I've uploaded and also stuff I'm going to be uploading. And this little device is gonna be basically synchronizing all that, keeping it an offline copy. So if for some reason the channel disappears or YouTube goes, then we can just upload all the content to another platform and basically we're still in business, which yeah, for the price of this alone is worth its weight in gold, it really is. But there's obviously other apps you can use. There's Surveillance Station, which you can use if you're maybe in an office environment and you've got security cameras, 
you can actually connect those as long as they support the features in there, so IP cameras essentially. But you don't have to do that. There are four licenses built into this, so you can have up to four cameras. If you want to extend it, you can do. You can buy more licenses to expand that. Most people, I think, realistically, probably for the kind of home office or small office or just personal use, are going to take advantage of the backup features. Now, you can back up, obviously, your own personal devices, so your mobile phones, your desktops, laptops, all that kind of stuff. But also, you can upload your data from NAS to NAS, or if you've got a cloud service. So if you're using Google Drive or OneDrive, those kinds of things, you can actually synchronize this to those other platforms. So again, these days when hacks and all those kinds of things do happen on a more frequent basis, you can actually have it so that your data is gonna be on your primary device, you can have it on your NAS device, and you can synchronize that to cloud services as well, which ideally is something you wanna do. You always wanna have your data in at least three places, just in case. And again, for the price of somewhere in the region of like £230, with the speeds and the power that this has got, again, we've got two gigabytes of RAM, which actually for this price of NAS is a lot. Generally, you're looking at either 512 megabytes or a gig. This is doubling that up to two gigabytes. So for some people, if you're using maybe Plex, Plex does require a little bit extra horsepower. So having that extra gig of RAM over some of the smaller models is gonna be really beneficial. And also there's something else which I didn't mention, which is actually built into this. There is what they call a media mode. So media mode will actually take 512 megabytes of RAM from the system in its entirety. It won't take it away from other apps, but it will just put it into like a separate area. So that is only to be used by media apps. So again, to help things like transcoding, that is gonna make it so much more smoother. And again, because we've got this Realtek processor in here, which is slightly slower than some of the alternatives from Intel and AMD, that's gonna give that extra bit of RAM, the processor a little bit more breathing room. Now this part in the video, I'd have loved to have shown you some performance numbers, but sadly I am limited by gigabit transfers on my particular switch at the moment. Although Asus Store have promised me a 2.5 gigabit switch at a later date, so I can actually do some performance numbers, so stay tuned for that. But realistically, you're gonna be limited pretty much by your drives. Most of the time on a gigabit network, with SATA style drives, you are gonna be limited somewhere in the region of about 120 megabytes per second, which for most people is gonna be absolutely fine. Again, if you put faster drives in and you're using that 2.5 gigabit switch, you can then have obviously more people sharing the data at a time, taking various bits of data from various areas of the drive, which then spreads the bandwidth. So yeah, anyway, hopefully that all makes sense. Overall, I'm really impressed. It's a really nice little unit. It looks great. The most important thing for me actually, bizarrely, is of how quiet it is. Now, I've been using Seagate four terabyte drives in here, the Iron Wolf drives, which this fully supports, and also the Iron Wolf data management system. You can install that as well to keep a better idea of the actual health status of your drives. So that's a really good thing to have. Obviously, if one of your drives dies, it's not the end of the world because you've got your spare drive in there, but it's always good to have some sort of notification of if there is gonna be any impending doom coming your way. Anyway, I've waffled on for way, way too long. I've probably not covered half the things that this device can do. If there's any specific things you want to know about it, please let us know in that comment section below. We're going to be doing tons of follow-up videos on this, especially with regards to Take Easy and some of the other apps that are included, because I think actually they deserve videos of their own rather than just trying to condense it all into one long video, so that way you can pick out the bits that you actually want to learn about. So anyway, let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. I think actually for the specs this gives, the potential as well for the additional storage through those USB ports. I think this is actually a really decent device, especially if you're not entirely sure what you wanna be doing with your NAS, because believe me, I've had a bit of experience now, and whatever you think you wanna do with your NAS, when you come to actually use it, you'll think of something else you wanna do with it as well. So anyway, let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below, but for the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.